Good afternoon, Mrs. Dinosaur. Thanks for coming in today. It's quite all right, Mr. Bird. Please, take a seat. Thank you. So the reason I asked you to come into school this afternoon is to talk about Barney. I figured as much. My daughter Robin's always been a model student. What's Barney done now? It's nothing too serious, Mrs. Dinosaur. The fact is that Barney is a very enthusiastic and active member of the class. He's always prepared to have a go and try new things. Well, that is all well and good, but I'm sure that is not the reason why I'm sitting here, is it, Mr. Bird? No, Mrs. Dinosaur, it's not. The issue is that at times this energy of Barney's is not always channeled in a productive way. Particularly during the last month or so, he has struggled to keep still and distracts other students from learning in the classroom. Oh, I see. I've spoken to Barney on two occasions prior to contacting you, but the behaviour has continued. Have you noticed any changes in his behaviour at home? Well, Barney has been quite restless since the soccer season ended last month. I see. Is Barney currently playing any sport? No. Do you think that could be causing his behaviour? Quite possibly, Mrs Dinosaur. It seems more than a coincidence. I remember Barney showed me a flyer for an indoor soccer club the other week. Maybe I should look into that. That seems like a great idea, Mrs Dinosaur. I'll make sure to follow up with Barney about his behaviour in class. Would it be possible for you to have a talk to him about it as well? Certainly, Mr Bird. I'll have a chat with him tonight and find out about that indoor soccer club. Thank you, Mrs Dinosaur. I appreciate your assistance in this matter. I'll give you a call in about a week or so and let you know how it's progressing. Thanks for your time. To begin with, it is clear that Mr. Bird has contacted Mrs. Dinosaur prior to the meeting to come in. This is really important as parents are busy people and they are more likely to be in a cooperative mindset if they have been given notice that you wish to talk with them. It's clear from Mrs. Dinosaur's response when she says, what's Barney done now? that she's previously had negative experiences with teachers contacting her about her son's behaviour. Mr Bird is quick to flag that it's nothing too serious and to point out some positive attributes about her son. Mr Bird does this as it will put Mrs Dinosaur at ease and make her less defensive. Again, Mrs Dinosaur shows that the only reason she has previously been brought into the school was for behaviour issues with her son. And again, it was a negative experience. So what Mr Bird does next is state the issue and he frames it as a problem with behaviour and not with her son personally. The next thing that Mr Bird does is that he tells Mrs Dinosaur that he's spoken with her son on two separate occasions trying to resolve the matter before contacting her. This shows that he values Mrs. Dinosaur's time and that he has tried to resolve the matter himself before contacting her. The next thing that Mr. Bird does is he asks Mrs. Dinosaur if she has noticed any changes in her son's behaviour at home. And this question pays dividends for Mr. Bird because Mrs. Dinosaur flags that he has been quite restless since the soccer season ended last month, which also coincides when the problematic behaviour commenced. And the next question Mr. Bird asks is, is Barney currently involved in any sport? And this allows Mrs. Dinosaur to draw the connection and see that her son not playing sport has led to him having an abundance of energy that he is not being able to use productively, either in the classroom or at home. Mrs. Dinosaur then flags a possible solution to Mr. Bird, saying that her son showed her a flyer for an indoor soccer club, demonstrating to her that he is keen to continue playing soccer. Mr. Bird is quick to praise the idea introduced by Mrs. Dinosaur and he then states that he will follow up with her son at school and kindly ask that she do so at home, which she agrees to do. Mrs. Dinosaur further states that she will follow up with getting the details of the indoor soccer club from her son. Mr. Bird then thanks Mrs. Dinosaur and makes it really clear that he appreciates her assistance in this matter. The last thing he does is he says that he'll contact her in about a week or so, to let her know how the matter is progressing. Now let's examine Amatea's partnership paradigms and see where this example fits. Mr. Bird clearly displays use of the collaboration paradigm. 
This is a paradigm where a teacher views a student's school life and home life as being interconnected, that is, that one directly affects the other. A teacher who follows the collaboration paradigm seeks to achieve a process where teachers and the family work together as equals to achieve the best outcome for the student. As stated previously, it's clear from Mrs. Dinosaur's responses that she had a negative experience with meeting with teachers in the past. In this case, she had previously met with teachers operating within the remediation paradigm. That is, they will only contact her once there is a problem and it's a situation where it's a blame game. By contrast, Mr. Bird contacted Mrs. Dinosaur to inform her that there was a behaviour issue and to seek her insights into coming up with a solution, and that is what is achieved in this scenario. Further, Mr. Bird has said that he will contact Mrs. Dinosaur in about a week or so to update her on the matter. Within the remediation paradigm, the contact would only occur if the matter had not been resolved. However, Mr. Bird is going to contact Mrs. Dinosaur regardless of whether the matter is resolved to let her know how it is going. This is an example of another facet of the collaboration paradigm being regular communication between the family and the teacher. Mr. Bird is a good teacher. Be like Mr. Bird. Thank you.